source of the outbreak has not yet been determined, and local authorities are urging New York City residents to remain indoors. And now on to Juicy Julie for Celebrity Talk. Okay, hi guys, welcome to the show. Very quick video today. I don't know how much time we've got left. Uh, I just wanted to share five reasons why uh, this is the ultimate bee to watch. And uh, if you need to do yard work or you're facing possible end of the world scenario, uh, this, is, this is definitely under $50. This is the best watch to oh, Jesus Christ, that was close. I think they're gonna get in. I think I can hear them, they're gonna get in. Okay, let's, uh, let's wrap this up. Right, okay, grab my Explorer, grab my Explorer. Okay. Wait, 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 where's my flight master? My Squally, I need my Squally. Where's my Squally? Okay, turn off, turn off. <laughs> Before I get into this, I'll do a quick wristwatch check. Yes, I'm still wearing the Catalina, can you blame me? And I have it on a reverse Bond NATO strap from Wrist Candy Watch Club. And I have to confess, I only got this strap with the sole purpose of uh, wearing it with the Catalina. And I think, I think the combination works. So yeah, as you can imagine, I'm still chuffed to bits. But anyway, let's commence with these five reasons. Okay, so number five is history. In 1983, Japanese inventor Kiko Aibe came up with this world-changing design. So legend has it that he inherited a watch of his grandfather. He then dropped it. It was, of course, a mechanical timepiece. And as we all know, they are far less robust than digital and quartz watches. And it broke. And then he came up with the genius idea of inventing something that would withstand gravitational shocks. And that's pretty much where the name comes from. So he had a list of stringent requirements he wanted the watch to meet. Uh, it had to have 10 bar water resistance. It had to withstand a drop from 10 meters. And it had to have a 10 year battery life. 200 prototypes later, he succeeded. The DW5600 was born. Now, we mustn't forget that not only was he making history, but Casio itself as a brand had already established itself as a tour de force in the watchmaking world. Uh, you know, we, we only have to look at the data bank of the 80s and the subsequent F91W in the 90s. So the G-Shock really was part of this trio of icons. So how did iBay achieve this? Well, inside the G-Shock is this free floating cradle that the quartz digital module sits in and it's protected by 10 layers of rubber and steel and all kinds of bits and bobs. And in September 2017, Casio celebrated its 100 millionth shipment of G-Shocks worldwide. Reason number four is that it has achieved the iconic status that, well, all watch companies and brands only dream of. It has been adopted by military personnel all over the world. It's seen practical application from mountaineers to firefighters to paramedics to law enforcement, even astronauts. The G-Shock has been certified for spaceflight by NASA. And in fact, we often talk about the Speedmaster and the Fortis Cosmonaut as being uh, you know, the, the, the most worn watches in space, but running close third behind them is the G-Shock DW5600. There are simply tons of great photographs on numerous space flights and space missions of it being worn in space. But not only has it become iconic in the way people use them, in pop culture, in cinema, even on the catwalk, there's fashion accessories 
And just like any true iconic watch, they've become collector's items as well, with more rarer and obscure models being highly desired. There are even forums and YouTube channels devoted solely to the G-Shock. And I certainly count myself as a fan of this um, hugely important watch. Reason number three is affordability. There is no doubt that you're gonna find it very difficult to find a watch as usable, as practical, and durable as the G-Shock. In fact, whenever I review a mil-spec watch or a historically important military watch, there's always comments from personnel uh, serving in the military, and they say, well, I always wore a G-Shock. That's all we wore. And that's very, very true, because the G-Shock even undermines <laughs> watch brands that have been contracted to supply affordable mil-spec watches on a large scale. You know, when they, when they equipped an entire division, it has to be affordable. Well, the G-Shock undermines all that and is able to offer something that is far more um, usable for a lot less. And let's take this as an example. This was just a smidgen over 40 bucks for me, right? Quarter the price of your average fashion watch. So amazing value for money in my opinion, and they also make great gifts. But the ultimate benefit of their affordability is the fact that if you somehow do manage to destroy this, you can easily replace it. It's not the end of the world. And I love the, the, the kind of nonchalance and the ability of just enjoying it and not having to worry about it uh, that this watch gives. And that's why it's definitely the best beta watch ever made. <laughs> okay, number two is the variety and choice you have to choose from. There are so many colors. There are so many different combinations. In 2001, they introduced the first metal band. Recently, we've seen the introduction of an entire steel version. They are moddable as well. Uh, for example, on mine, I've added the adapters from JNK so I can fix a NATO, or in this case, a two-piece strap onto it. And the moddability can get really crazy. There are even blinged out versions. There are many limited editions made in collaboration with brands or or sports stars, musicians, and you can find one that reflects your personality or your favorite colors. And I just think that's really, really fun. Often we take watches far too seriously and, and I really do appreciate when you have a little bit more of a livelier choice to choose from. But not only has the variety expanded in the choice of, of you know, the style, G-Shock itself, and I'm talking beyond the DW5600 family. I'm talking ones with full ABC capabilities now. You know, there's the, the Range Man, there's the Frog Man, there's the, it's just exploded. And every year, G-Shock adds some new functionality to their designs. Very difficult to beat in terms of the variety you have to choose from. Okay, and the number one reason, well, it's pretty obvious. What it was designed to do, it does it ruddy well, okay? It even broke records. In 2017, G-Shock earned the Guinness World Record for the heaviest vehicle to drive over a watch. This was a 24.9 ton truck, and it ran over a DW5600 E-1. The G-Shock is the first watch by any company able to withstand the this challenge. But not only is it built like a tank, it has the features. You've got uh, a stopwatch, you've got a calendar, you have the day, the date, a countdown timer, you have the accuracy of a digital watch, the performance. You have on this one 200 meters water resistance, which is as much as a dive watch. Since 1996, they've come with standard electroluminescent backlights, which beats any luminescence on a traditional watch hands down. 
since 2005, so the power has been available in the slightly more expensive version of mine, thus eliminating the need to replace the battery. In 2009, they introduced multi-band six atomic timekeeping. So essentially it was able to receive a signal and synchronize its accuracy with an atomic clock. Now, of course, that version is double the price of this, but still remarkably under $100. What I love about the DW5600, this very particular kind of retro sci-fi square look with these kind of brutalist style edges, it's just very lovable, very distinctive, and unmistakably faithful to the original. But beyond that, it's extremely comfortable to wear, and you just put it on and you don't think about it. I honestly believe every watch collection should have a beta watch, and this one is perhaps the most difficult to beat because of all the complications you get, the accuracy, and beyond that, the comfort. It is a classic watch, and you know, it's gonna rub a lot of people the wrong way because when they think of classic watches, they think of something very traditional, mechanical, you know, like a Cartier tank or something, right? That hasn't really changed for 100 years. Well, this is just as classic. Okay, guys, so I'm gonna leave it there. I urge you, if you've never tried one, never owned one, it's never too late. Personally, I'm always gonna have a G-Shock in my collection. And actually, I would love to hear what your favorite G-Shock is. Please do add uh, your favorite G-Shock in the comments below. I will be reviewing a few more of them in the future, so stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful. And as always, guys, I will catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao. This is a public service reminder for the good gentry. Please follow us on Instagram, join the Facebook UGWC group, and click on the bell to keep notified of new videos. Don't forget to keep it positive, keep it gentry, onwards and upwards. Thank you.